Hey Lynn Valley Church family, welcome once again to another daily devotional and this week once again we'll be looking at another other 316 in scripture. Today we'll come back to the New Testament and we'll go to 2 Peter 316 uh, and take a look at that. But in looking at 2 Peter 3.16, we kind of have to back up and get a couple verses before and a few verses after just to kind of get the context uh, within what's happening in verse uh, 3.16 in 2 Peter. Um, and this part of script, passage of Scripture, verses 14 through 18, kind of concludes this second epistle that's attributed to Peter uh, with this powerful exhortation and this insightful teaching about Christian living and spiritual growth. And uh, Scripture says this, beginning in verse 14, So then, dear friends, since you're looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with Him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. Now listen to what Paul, uh, Peter says about Paul in verse 16, verse 316. He, meaning Paul, writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which, is, which ignorant and unstable people distort, as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. Therefore, dear friends, since you've been forewarned, be on your guard so that you may not uh, be carried away by the error of the lawless and fall from your secure position. But, now, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. So, this passage, like I said, is nestled within the broader context of uh, Peter's second letter. Uh, that addresses issues such as uh, the second coming of Christ, the reality of a divine judgment, uh, and the significance of holy living uh, as we anticipate uh, the future promise as far as the return of Christ Jesus. But verse 16 uh, digs into this frank recognition here of the complexity of Paul's writings, stating that some things are hard to understand. And I guess if there was a statement that was ever more truthful was uh, ever written would be that concerning Paul's writings. Some things are hard to understand. Uh, and this admission here by Peter reflects uh, the reality about the richness and the depth of biblical teaching uh, all throughout uh, the ages that, you know, there's just this vast amount of knowledge that's been acquired over the centuries that men have just been brought to their knees with this powerful, powerful interpretation of some of the things that the Apostle Paul has written about. But Peter also acknowledges that certain aspects of Paul's letters pose some challenges to, uh, as far as interpretation goes, requiring people to have a little bit uh, more careful time as far as their studies is concerned and to be a little bit more on guard as far as their discernment, you know, and not to just take things on the surface but really to dig deep into what Paul was saying a lot of times because I'll admit myself that when reading uh, Paul's writings, uh, I mean, you could, you could take one verse and, and, and contemplate on it for, for weeks and, and just absolutely be blessed each and every day. But there's a cautionary note here about uh, ignorant and unstable people uh, distorting Paul's writings, and this under, underscores a, a broader concern about mis misinterpreting scripture within the Christian community. You know, there there are some costs associated with doing something like that, but uh, and we don't need to write really you know, feel bad here about the use of the term ignorant. It doesn't necessarily mean that uh, people have a lack of intelligence. It simply means here in this case that there's a lack of understanding or a lack of knowledge. And in most cases, if you would, I'm most people would agree that the the word ignorance simply just means not to know. It doesn't mean that you have you have a lack of intelligence. It just means you don't know, uh, or you once again the, your understanding is lacking. But uh, there's this emphasis here that we have to have a need for a, a humble and a teachable spirit when we engage with Scripture. Um, I often said to people that uh, you can't approach the study of Scripture with a physical mindset expecting a spiritual truth to be revealed to you. That's not how it works. Um, you know, a spiritual mindset will have 
a discernment of spiritual truths coming from Scripture. It doesn't. If you're just reading the book physically for what's there, then all you're going to get out of it is a physical truth. May not be what you want to hear. May not be what you want to see. May not be what you want to feel. But that's all you're going to get from it. You need to have Scripture speaking to your heart, and Scripture will speak to your heart. It'll speak to you in a spiritual sense if you approach it with a humble servant heart with a spiritual mindset. This phrase, as they do other scriptures, here's a significant uh, recognition of the fact that Paul's letters are part of authorized scriptures um, and also highlights the recognition here of the Old Testament, or the, I'm sorry, the New Testament writings, uh, especially those of Paul, <coughs> are as divinely inspired and are on par with uh, all of the Old Testament scriptures. There's, um, there's no lacking involved here. <coughs> there's all <coughs> building up the, the body of Christ. And this mention here of a distortion and destruction emphasizes that there's some consequences of misinterpreting scripture. Um, there's, this, there's this seriousness that needs to be underscored here when God's word is mishandled, uh, leading not only to a personal misunderstanding for yourself, uh, but it could also lead to a spiritual harm and confusion within the community. You know, so many times people have, have taken scripture out of context and use it to, and, and and it's often been said you could take a scripture out of context and prove any negative that you want to prove <clears throat> does that mean it's right no it just means you've taken something out of context you have to take scripture as a whole and you have to see it from not only it's uh, spiritual and figurative and historical context but you also have to you know be prepared for it to speak to you spiritually within your heart and um a lot of times that just doesn't happen. People try to justify themselves with the things that they're doing wrong in their life by using Scripture to show that they can uh, that they're okay. Well, I'm sorry, that's just not how Scripture works. But all of these verses here uh, encourages us and gives us a valuable insight as we navigate the complexities of our life in these modern times uh, this call to for moral pure moral purity and um, uh, spiritual growth uh, resonates with the challenges and opportunities that all Christians face today um, this emphasis on the unity within the body of Christ as reflected in Paul's recognition of uh, I'm sorry Peter's recognition of Paul's teachings encourages all of us at any time to seek common ground and to build on a mutual foundation uh, despite our differences you know the fact that we're all come together as one body in Christ here in this church uh, is a testament to what Christ can do in a body of believers uh, yes we're all different uh, we, there's, God doesn't expect us all to be the same and to think the same and look the same and that kind of, God allows us to be an individual but as an individual you also are collectively a member of his body and that's what's so special about this this passage of scripture and this call here we have in the later verses to make every effort to live spotlessly and blamelessly joined with this warning against uh, a distortion of the doctrine of Christ underscores the active role that we as Christians have in shaping our spiritual journey each and every day we are challenged to confront complacency and we are have a call in our heart for daily study of scripture uh, we need to reflect we need to contemplate and we need to get, have a commitment to continual spiritual development in our heart and our life you know don't settle for what you had yesterday or what you've achieved today look forward to what God's going to do with you and for you tomorrow uh, and finally here in Second Peter in this passage of scripture we are navigating through warnings and acknowledgments and affirmations and we have a provision here for uh, our Christian journey that we are taking and we're encouraged to be vigilant we are encouraged encouraged to be deliberate and active in our faith each and every day and all of this while we're emphasizing the ultimate purpose of uh, bringing glory and honor and praise to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ uh, both here in the present and for all eternity to come. That's our goal. That's our uh, that's our calling. 
as Christians to bring honor and glory to His name. Not ours, to His name. Because it's in His name that we have our being. Praise your name today for being here with us. We'll see you next week with another other 316 in Scripture. Thank you.